everyone. Welcome back to another Zoom interview with Meet the Equinate. Today we are with Miss Kissa Ortega, the owner of <laughs> Ninong's Pastries. Well, no, I'm sorry. It's not Ninong's Pastries anymore. It's um, Ninong's Dessert Lab and Pastries. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Welcome, Kissa. How are you doing today? <laughs> Good. I'm so happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, so I, you're, you know, we actually, my family and I have been um, following your restaurant for years. <laughs> you know, since you guys have been in Chatsworth um, uh, in Granada Hills, um, I think we, we ran into you guys in 2013, or we found the restaurant in 2013. And from then on, my daughter was just saying, I want purple pancakes, mommy, every Saturday, purple pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not, until you guys moved to your Northridge location, um, it was all about the purple pancake. Um, and I think Ninong's, um, you know, uh, your, I would say your baby, your restaurant, put Ube in the map for the 818. So kind of tell me about how that happened and how that experience was for you guys. Yeah, so, man, the first, um, by the time you had... Uh, been introduced to Ninong's, we were already in business for five years. And the, I think the biggest hurdle for us as a Filipino business and eatery was like, how do we, how do we set ourselves apart? So in the beginning, we were trying all these things. We had a vision of what we wanted to be. And uh, we wanted to be like the next big Filipino bakery of them all, you know, I, you know, the like two very popular ones. And originally that was the goal. But when we were originally looking, um, we had found what ended up being our Granada Hills location. And that used to be before we came in, they were a deli. Yes. So because of that, um, they were serving breakfast, they were serving um, sandwiches, that type of stuff. And they were selling like tuna salad by the pound and things like that. So my mom originally was like, well, I don't want to lose their existing customer base. So let's offer some, you know, kind of do a hybrid of what we were originally planning on doing and then adding the deli aspect to it too. So we were, to be honest, kind of lost because we were trying to meld together our concept, what was already there, and then trying to make it work. And then on top of that, uh, you know, Granada Hills being not really densely populated in the Philippine, you know, with mm. Filipinos. I mean, there are a good amount, but there just aren't any, there aren't a lot of Filipino representation God. when it comes to businesses and food, especially in that area. So I grew up in that area and I knew there are a lot, but we always drive farther to go get, you know, groceries or whatever it is that we need. So um, we knew that that was where we wanted to start because not only did we want to reach Filipinos, but we wanted to reach other cultures also. And we knew that we have friends, friends of friends that are non-Filipino that know of our food. We want them to come into the door. And that was always the goal. But like I said, because we were kind of lost in the beginning and our, and our journey was like, do we be a deli? Do we be a bakery? How do we meld the two? What are we selling? What do we want to be known for? Um, it took a long time. It took um, five, four years for us to really figure that out. And so in 2012 is when we first started our kind of test run of the Ube pancakes. Oh. <laughs> and I remember I it was to the point where we were struggling not and we were not only exhausted physically because we were working so much, but we were also mentally like, why isn't it working? Like what's hap Like, what do we need to do? Like we we're trying, but it's not, it doesn't seem like it's enough. And so at some point I was like, we have to do something different. Like this is not enough to pull people in. We got to do something weird. We got to do something outside of the box. And it was almost to the point where we were like, it's not, this is not going to work. We got to close. And it just popped into my head um, because I was a pancake kid growing up <laughs> on Saturdays. It was always pancakes. Yep. I loved waffles, but my mom never made waffles in our house. She didn't even have a waffle maker. And so I was a pancake kid. And um, 
I remember I had the idea of Uve pancakes. Mm -hmm. I pitched it to my mom and my mom was like, at this point, we don't need, we don't have money to try it out. So if you want to try this, you have to use your own money. And I said, okay, that's fair. That's fine. So I bought the, you know, the original ingredients of what I thought would work. I kind of tested it. Um, Charlie, my husband, who is the chef now, mm -hmm. uh, we put, we put it together and he said, this is pretty good. Let's, you know, let's make it for, oh, sorry. No, you're fine. Let's make it for your family. Okay. And so um, I, you know, pitched it. I like presented it all, you know, nice yeah. and everything. And then I had them try it and they're like, okay, sure. Let's try it. I don't know if you ever knew, but we used to do weekend specials I, where yes. Wait, yeah, I, we I do a different dish every weekend. Yes. <laughs> and one of those weekends, my mom said, okay, you can do the weekend special. I'm going to send out an email and say that this is what we're serving. And then I had this like electric highlighter, yellow dry erase board. Yeah. And I just wrote special <laughs> Uwe pancake breakfast. And mm -hmm. then uh, we did it. And I remember the first day we did it, uh, we had a two burner stove mm -hmm. and a pan and I was oh doing one pancake at a time. <laughs> and the oh whole my gosh. day, oh my gosh, I have to tell you, the whole day, I was in front of that stove and I didn't move because I was just making pancakes one at a time <laughs> for the whole day. And my mom said, okay, when are we going to do it again? And that's kind of where it started, we realized, oh, we're making something that people are interested in, that people like. And so I printed out the picture, we put it out in the front and everything. And then every time someone walked in, they're like, oh, what's that? They're like, blueberry? Is that a blueberry pie? And so it was an, also an opportunity to educate the community of like, oh no, that's not blueberry actually, it's ube. And then it would start that conversation. So when we found kind of our signature product, like our our one thing that we were known for, it just kind of spearheaded the rest of the business. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think when you guys took off with the ube, ube started popping up everywhere. I kid you not. <laughs> yeah, it From... was almost like right place, right time. You know, exactly. I don't know if you, if you had ever walked into the original Ninongs before the walls were purple. Before the world's, uh, yes, yes. I and don't remember green. Color. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they were, <laughs> the walls were great. We had no, like, we did not think like, oh, we're going to brand ourselves as the Ube, you know, like an Ube conglomerate. Like we had no idea. We just knew we wanted to be Philippine. We wanted to represent Filipinos everywhere. And that's what we wanted, but we didn't know how we were going to do that. And then what we did was when we saw that was working, then my aunt was like, oh, I can make more ube pastries. Mm -hmm. And then I can, and then I said, we can make an ube smoothie. We could do this, we could do that. And then we just kind of embraced that. And then that's when we painted the walls purple. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember, I don't remember the exact color, but I, kn I, I knew it before it was purple. So when you guys painted it purple, it was like, this is nice. This is good because the pancake and the purple completely makes sense <laughs> and I remember like going on a Saturday and you guys had a line and sometimes we had to call in our order um so yeah so it was it was nice it was nice to see a Filipino restaurant with a line out the door <laughs> you know selling a product from well you know from my childhood or from you know from the Filipino community's childhood because Ubi was a thing for us <laughs> yeah. you know it was it was great so um, you know, I mean, from then on, you guys just kind of like flew. <laughs> you even do, um, I mean, Kathy from Sweet Snow told me one time that, oh, those Nino's cookies, that's our topping. I was like, oh my gosh, when is, when am I not going to run into something Nino's? <laughs> you guys were all over the place and it was amazing. Um, so with that, like, I know that you guys, Oh, after the ube pancakes, you guys did the, the pancake flight with the mango, the buku pandan, and all that. Like, how did you just 
say to yourself, like, I'm going to try other flavors apart from the Ube flagship, or how did that happen? Yeah, um, that was the that was the original plan because when we saw how popular they were, uh, because we were doing it just on the weekend, or it originally started once a month, mm -hmm. and then every other week, and then it became every weekend. Uh, we were I just kind of was telling my family we have to capitalize on this, and if people like pancakes, then let's create more pancakes you know um it's the it's the perfect way to introduce the flavors mm -hmm. to people and then because I started observing I'm a I'm by nature I like to like study how things work mm -hmm. and so I started observing customer behaviors and all that stuff and I noticed that you know if someone were to try the ube pancakes they would go to the pastries and say what other ube stuff do you have Mm -hmm. So we had other products that were coconut, that, we, that were buko flavored. We had others that were mango. And so I just said, let's take those popular flavors and you just throw it into something familiar so that we can get people to be interested in those things. And the only way that, uh, that you can do that in a time where people were kind of brave to experiment, but not brave enough to do something really <laughs> weird to them and foreign yeah. uh, was to meld the flavors together. And you know, that period of time where like the word fusion was being thrown around yep. everywhere. Absolutely. It was that time. <laughs> so we just said, okay, what else is popular among our, uh, among our culture and our like fellow Filipinos that makes sense mm -hmm. that we can kind of use to create new, you know, new, um, new pancake flavors and of course mango original like easy of and course. everyone is like oh mango yeah I know what that tastes like <laughs> uh so mango was the next one and then buka pandan was the one after and what's funny is everyone always asks like how come you didn't make the buka pandan pancakes green mm -hmm. you know and it was always because the the flavor mattered to yeah. us and when you're trying to get the pandan flavor because it's so subtle you know like there there are a lot of times you'll eat somewhere and then you you try something and you are expecting it to taste like ube or pandan or whatever and you taste exactly. it and you're like I don't taste it like I'm looking for it and it's not coming out that's why we never did because it's just you're just adding and nothing's happening and you're like okay it's not worth it to just pull off the color Mm -hmm. without the, the flavor profile being there and you tasting it. So that was, a, I think, a big part of why we wanted to do the flight of pancakes because um, when we first did the ube, of course, everyone wanted to try it because people started posting it online and of course. You know, Instagram <laughs> and Facebook was just on the rise. You know, mm -hmm. Instagram was just on the rise when we started doing the pancakes. And uh, no one would order the mango or the buko pandan. <laughs> I would just, order your mango. <laughs> yeah, like the Filipinos would, but yeah. majority of people were just coming in because they're like, I saw those purple pancakes. I need those purple pancakes. I don't want to try anything else. And so Charlie actually came up with the idea of doing a sampler. He was mm -hmm. like, let's do, I think it was him. He said, let's do one of each. But because he's a chef, he was like, it's great that we do one of each, but because they're stacked on top of each other, you don't get the it, flavor. Yeah, yeah. It becomes too like melded and it's, mm -hmm. we lose it. We lose it. So he's a, he's a, a beer aficionado. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, why don't we do like a beer flight, but pancakes instead. And yeah. so it was his idea to like do a little mini one and like really, present it nicely he's mm -hmm. the creative uh he's the creative when it comes to all that stuff and I'm more of the like okay the taste has to be there mm -hmm. the you know the operation we got to make sure you know all that stuff that's more that's more my cup of tea got it so you're more the details like everything yeah. has to be and then he just goes well this looks good let's do this yeah <laughs> that's yeah. that's perfect that's like a really good marriage I mean no pun intended marriage and marriage <laughs> of your personalities and skills and, and I mean that's why Nino works so well I think because it's you two um and uh what's funny was um 
your pancakes are really good, but sometimes I felt like your breakfast that was really good too, was just getting overshadowed by the pancakes. Like my husband's favorite was actually the tapsibog. Um, and then I liked um, your, the fish one, the bangsilog. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. bangos, <laughs> milkfish. <laughs> um, and you know, that was like, you know, it was just like, it was nice seeing you guys grow from your Granada Hills location to your Northridge location. That was like amazing to us. Like, you know, I, I would see people when we would walk in, take pictures of your, your wall, your, I love yeah. your wall, <laughs> you know, and I know a couple people did some events there too, you know, so it was, it was nice. Like that, the, just the evolution of Granada Hills to Northridge was amazing. Um, but then um, pandemic hit. So that was, I, I, I think that was one of your guys' biggest challenges <laughs> as a, as a company. Yeah, it was there. Oh man, to be honest, there were so many times where throughout the, when the pandemic hit in, what was it? Mar mid March. Yeah. Mid -March. And then when we ended up closing in November, there were so many, it was such a roller coaster. Of, do we try and push through it? Do we not? We should close. No, we shouldn't. Like it was just so hard because in some ways I was like, man, if we had stayed in Granada Hills, mm -hmm. maybe we would have made like it was there was always just this like, if I had done this, if I had done that, maybe things would have been different. And you know, at some point I had to just say, no, I mean, we were happy where we were in Northridge. And there was so like we were doing so many great things. Mm -hmm. And it was just the circumstance out of our control we did the best we could and it is what it is you know and um so we finally all just in agreement as a family said we could try to keep going but it would everything would stack up all the bills would stack up and at what point would we even be able to pay it back if exactly. when and if things got back to normal because we didn't, obviously, all of us didn't know. No one had an answer of when it was going to end. And like, um, the, our expenses there were just so high because it's just so big. And if it was, if it was a different situation, maybe, but it just, no matter how we put it at, at the end of the day, our peace of mind ended mm -hmm. up winning and who, who knows? I don't know what's going to happen next, but the one thing I've learned from that is never say never because you think you know what the plan is, you know, <laughs> but, but you, you don't. Have no idea. <laughs> Which kind of brings me to the next part of your incarnation of Ninongs. No, um, you know, you're the next form of Ninongs, which is, I found it so inspiring and admirable. Oh my God, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> but I found it, I know, I was like, you're going to start oh my gosh. Um, no, but I, I found it so inspiring and admirable that you guys, even when you closed, you guys can't, like, just push through. Like, you have this online store, you have, like, your pop-ups. Like, I feel like you're at a pop-up every weekend. <laughs> you know, so tell me about that. Like, that's just, to me, it's very inspirational, so. Thank you. I... I think a lot of people say this about me where um, I hold the weight of a lot of people on my shoulders and I know a lot of people depend on me. And so I, I have this blend of, you know, being realistic, but also being very optimistic of what could happen. I have a, like, I have a, a balance between the two and I try to use that uh, to my advantage and Luckily, um, we already had an online store pre-pandemic. It wasn't, it was definitely not our main source of income. It was just, uh, you know, as our, as our brand grew, our goal was, we were kind of thinking in our head, how can we reach more people outside of the Valley, outside of LA, even outside of SoCal? How can we reach them? And so we started the online store just to add a little bit of something you know, there. Luckily we did, you know, um, and actually people don't know, but, you know, our Ube pancake mix 
we for a long time had been working on it. Mm-hmm. And before the pandemic, it was actually ready. They were just waiting on me to um, research the packaging, kind of figure out the logistic of what needed to go on the stickers and all of that stuff. But I was pregnant, I had the baby, and then the pandemic hit. Like, there was just all this stuff that was happening that was like pushing it back and pushing it back and pushing it back. And uh, when everything locked down and it was like going from a regular business day where we would have a hundred covers, you know, to two covers on a Saturday, oh, it was like wow. shocking. Yeah. You know, it was just, what do we do with the time? Do we let the employees like go home early? Can mm-hmm. we even provide them with hours after this? Like who knows how long? And so we said, I said, we need to use our online store because mm-hmm at the time, that's how I was shopping. That's how I was buying stuff. And so I said, other people must be doing it too. So let's do that. And I think I just, out of necessity, because I know so many people are kind of relying on me and depending on me, I just ha- I, I got used to just trying to think on my feet and trying to figure out how to pivot and how to like make my circumstance work. Um, this obviously isn't the first time where we run into a problem, you know, like there are other times where we're, we're like behind on opening the new location because we couldn't get this sign off or, you know, we're running out of funds because this was more expensive than we thought it would or whatever it is, you know, there's always something. And so everything leading up to that point kind of taught me how to say, okay, this is happening what can I do to soften the blow or make it easier on people or um, keep it going Mm -hmm. and that type of thing. And like I said, we had the online store in place. We were also already doing pop-ups. I know that you saw that we we would go to San Diego. We would do whatever. So all of that was luckily, like by God's grace, already there. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so we just kind of had to let, like the, the thing that was the scariest was, we were letting go of the biggest arm of the business, mm-hmm. which was the brick and mortar restaurant. But luckily we already had our equipment for pop-ups. We already had um, the online store ready to go. And we already had a following that we had created. So it wasn't that hard except the emotional, like the emotional like tie yeah (laughs) like not wanting to let let it go you know it that was the hardest part and I think that's why um it took so long because the moment it the moment it happened I was able to pay one month of rent and utilities Mm -hmm. and then after that I didn't spend anything because there was barely anything coming in and so I think we all knew it that it had to happen but we just couldn't get ourselves to do it because we're holding on in hopes that we could get back to normal sooner than later. And then after a while, when we saw it wasn't happening, we started thinking about long-term, like, is it even like, will we even be able to pay if this is happening for, our example was, if this is going to happen for a year, Mm -hmm. that's a lot of expenses. How are we even going to plan on paying that back? And it just wasn't, it wasn't feasible for us. It wasn't doable. Yeah, no, I, I actually, we had this conversation the last day because we stopped by and, you know, bought stuff just for old time's sake. <laughs> you know? yeah. I mean, even us as customers were just like so heartbroken, like, you know, having, yeah. you know, but knowing your circumstance, knowing that you just, you know, just had a baby and you're dealing with all of this, like it probably made sense. Um, but, you know, usually when one door closes, something else opens up. So yeah. um, I think like, what do you think, um, where do you think Ninong would be in like a year from now? Or where do you foresee your guys, uh, you know, your direction? <laughs> um, I want to touch just really quickly on that last day. Um, okay. Of course. Of service. I had no idea what to expect because we had made a decision. And within the next couple of days, we were like, okay, we have to, we have to shut down soon, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it was, we made the decision, we made an announcement, 
And then like literally three days later, we were closing. So we had no idea what to expect. We just wanted to have one more chance, one more weekend. And I was blown away by the amount of people that were walking in the door. It was like, I'm getting emotional now because I just remember like, I couldn't believe it. just how moving it was to hear all the things and all the memories and to see like your family and other families where kids would walk in and they were five <laughs> and their teachers <laughs> walking yeah. in to one more time or they had they're they're going to college and they saw on our Instagram that we were closing and they came in on their own because they're they're driving now they have their own car <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh it was just the I have a tissue box right here, but it was just the most emotional day because I I wasn't sure if anyone would even come because of the circumstance. Of course. And um, the, I wasn't sure if I could even come because we have the baby. And mm-hmm. so, um, but we did, we, we brought him, we knew we had to go <laughs> yeah. and it was, I'm so glad we did because I had those conversations like I did with you and mm. with a ton of other customers. And that is when we knew, um, you know, closing altogether was not an option because of course. yeah, we, we do this for our family, you know, for our livelihood, but to do it for this long, there's, more to it than that and I Mm -hmm. think the biggest reason why was because we love the people that we serve so much because we create those relationships and like I said we see kids growing up we see Mm -hmm. people getting married having kids and then like you see all of that happen in the span of it didn't even feel like 13 years (laughs) has it been 13 years oh my gosh 13 years before we closed, or I'm sorry, 12 years, 12 Mm -hmm. years before we closed. And it was, you know, it felt like the blink of an eye. I just can't believe that it was that long because we just, we just kept doing it. Like we just, you know, and so that last day of service was just so humbling. And it was such an honor to like be able to do it one last time um, in our space, in our own house, you know, that type of thing. It, it felt really nice to see how many people showed up for us. And it was since the pandemic started, it was our best day of sales that last day. And it was like, it was as if it was a, you know, like a regular day, like Mm -hmm. our sales was back to where it was pre-pandemic. And it was just because people were like, I'll buy this, I'll buy that, whatever you have, I'll take it. (laughs) Yeah. It was just amazing. Yeah. That's good. Did it make you feel like this is why I do this or this is why you and your husband do this? It's, it's the community. It's, yeah. you know, it's the 100%. support. Good. Yeah. <laughs> we would hate so many great people from doing this. And I tell people all the time, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I've started a bunch of businesses, but Ninong's has by far been the highlight of my career Uh and my life because I've met so many great people, lifelong friends uh, through this business that I never would have otherwise. And I always had big dreams for myself, but never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I was gonna own a restaurant because I can cook, but I am not a chef by any means. (laughs) And I had no idea that, you know, I was just helping out my family when it all started. That's all that it was in the beginning. It was to help them out. I had an exit strategy and the next thing you know, I'm there for 12 years and, and it's still going, you know, it's still ongoing. And and so I can never not be a part of it. It's just, Mm -hmm. you know, it, it has become such a highlight in my life that, um, it, and it's because not only did I grow up in the business, you know, like we started it when I think I was 22 years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> and the only day we actually ever closed mm-hmm. that wasn't a holiday was when Charlie and I got married because <laughs> we weren't married yet. And that was the only Saturday that we had ever closed for, you know, a non-holiday reason. Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, uh, it, it's one of those things where it's, 
a part of you. It's before Micah came around, it was my baby. It's like, I, I cared so much because of the people. I, I'm such a people person and I've gone through so many jobs where I would sit, I was sitting at a desk. I obviously made a lot more money, but <laughs> I was so bored. I hated it. I was unhappy. And when it came down to it, I said, I'd rather be with my family and have fun and talk to people and, you know, just live a comfortable life versus being unhappy, having more money and just being bitter all the time because I feel like I'm missing out or I'm regretting something. So, yeah. Oh man, that's so awesome. <laughs> I'm starting to tear just hearing you talk, man. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think, I think um, with what you started with just, you know, it's not just a pancake. It's not just Ube. I think, you know, you bringing for you and your husband or your family. So it's a group effort, obviously. Um, just brought, like, just not just the flavor of Ube to the forefront, but Filipino culture and bringing out a community because when we would sit there on Saturdays at your restaurants it's always a mix of people it wasn't just like all Filipinos you know yeah. <laughs> you had everyone there <laughs> and that's so, what we're really really proud of was to be like when we saw how mixed all our dining room was with all yeah. kinds of people or even families that brought their non-Filipino friends, yep. you know, like <laughs> Filipino people that would bring their non-Filipino friends and be like, you have to try this. This is the perfect way for you to try Filipino food. Like it was such an honor to, and it was just so, it was so exciting to see that because I knew that our goal was being accomplished, you know, and that's why we always, that's why we opened in Granada Hills and not somewhere else because mm -hmm. that's what we wanted. And when I would see that, there were so many videos on my phone of me just like taking a panoramic <laughs> video shot of our dining room because sometimes I would stand there and I would look and I'd be like, this is awesome. Like, I love this so much. Like, it's the coolest thing to me. And it was, it, it was always just, it was the best. It was so much fun. And that's why I feel like I felt like even with the pandemic, there was no way that we could stay away. <laughs> and of just course. Um, and going you back can't. to your question, yeah, like going back to your question of where I think we're going, I, to be honest with you, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I kind of like that because I'm such, I'm, I'm definitely a person that has that three year, five year, 10 year plan. And for the first time, I've had to really work on letting go and just riding with it and just letting it letting everything fall letting the cards fall where they may and mm -hmm. accepting that uh oh that's so hard for me <laughs> it's not it doesn't come naturally to me at all but in the next year I definitely know that we're not going to be able to open up a restaurant it's mm -hmm. not a possibility for us because even within that six months or eight I think it was eight months mm -hmm. of us trying to stay open we're still paying down debt and, and, you know, stuff like that. So I want to make sure we make good with all the things that are outstanding um, before we even think about that. And that's actually also another reason why we were like, okay, we need to, you know, the online store is doing great, but it's only helping us survive. It's not going to help us pay down anything. And so uh, that's why we started doing the pop-ups because um, Abby from Cafe Aficionado, mm -hmm. I've known her since high school, which is crazy. And <laughs> when she found out that we were closing, she's the one that, off, you know, that was like it offered and was like, is, if there's anything that we can do, please let me know. And I was so embarrassed to ask her, but I was like, can we actually use your space to like <laughs> coordinate pickups for our customers? Because I... You know, I don't want to, if someone lives in Northridge, I don't want to make them pay for shipping yeah, from our online store. Like, it's just right there. So she was like, yeah, absolutely. You yeah, know, no. she, you know it, gosh, she's the best. She's seriously the sweetest. And she said, yes, absolutely do it. And she said that because we became that place, anyone that would come in and pick up would buy a coffee, would maybe get breakfast and stuff like exactly. that. And it reminds me that, you know, commu 
our community, when we come together without any ill intent or without mm -hmm. expecting anything in return, it will always come back. The blessings will always pay it forward, you know, in some way. And so she was able to, you know, have a few extra sales here and there by cu our customers walking in. And then I was actually telling her about our debt and like how, how scared I was because I was like, we're not doing the same amount of sales yeah. as our, our restaurant. And so I don't know how we're going to pay all this stuff. And so she said, you know, let me, do you want to do a GoFundMe? What do you want to do? And I said, I don't know. Like I, I, I actually have no idea mm -hmm. how to navigate through this. And she was the one that said, why don't you pop up? Just do it once, see what happens. And if you like it, you can come once a month, you can come twice a month, however often you want to come. And that first weekend, we were the only ones there, right? You're <laughs> yes. the only ten. And you went to that one, right? I did because yeah. my, my daughter, I wanted to surprise my daughter because we have a stash of your pancake mix. <laughs> also, we ran out of your coconut syrup, which I will purchase that. <laughs> but my daughter like she really like I cannot tell you how much she's grown up with your purple pancakes I have a lot of pictures with just her like you know one day when you and I meet I mean not meet but when you know we're, when we're in person I'll show it to you yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you know this that was like oh my gosh they're gonna be open oh my gosh my daughter's gonna love this so much so when I walked home and you know up she just had this huge smile and she was like are they open again can we go back I'm like no I just picked it up why didn't you take me so I can oh. say <laughs> so next time I have to take her because you know she said I have you know I, she she wants to see you guys so I'm like all right yeah. next time <laughs> yeah oh that's was so nice. nice yeah no I love like I know a couple people too, when, you know, when I was telling them that, Hey, you know, this is doing a pop-up, let's go <laughs> support. They were just like, Oh my gosh, really? So like, yeah. I think, you know, they started going on your website, going and ordering. So you guys doing the pop-up, so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's been, it's been a good compromise, I think, mm -hmm. where we have that flexibility of schedule so that we can um, have some weekends, but then we can also work a weekend and see the customers because I have to be honest too, like as things started opening up and like yeah. oh, writing started becoming allowed and all that stuff. And, and then um, people started getting busier with indoor dining. I was like, man, I feel like I'm missing out because people are able, like, I see other restaurants, they're taking pictures with our customers because Aww. customers are so excited to be able to come back. And I'm like, I, I miss that. I feel like I have FOMO right now where I'm like, I can't see my customers, but the, I think the pop-ups are, are good for us for now. And definitely it's going to be something we're going to stick with for at least a, a, a year, oh, good, uh, good. the next year. And, um, I just, especially with Cafe Aficionado, um, I love Abby so much. Like she's yes. just been such a blessing and she actually told us this past weekend when we popped up on Sunday that you know I mean you've seen how it grew right now oh, there's like my gosh yes on both sides of the parking lot there's like a <laughs> row of tents which is so awesome yeah. because Abby was just like uh after we did that first pop-up and we were the only tent there like mm -hmm. right in the middle other people were like oh you know can can I like pop up too can is that something that I can do I sell this cookies mm -hmm. I sell uh smoothies I sell whatever it is and so um she was like yeah sure let's do it and so <laughs> it grew and grew and now her parking lot is full on Sundays which is so cool yeah. and every time we do it it gets better and better I think because you know our customers know and the word is starting to spread that we're doing pop-ups and what's great too is like she told me this this past Sunday that all the vendors were like I want to pop up when they pop up because <laughs> they bring people you know and I said that's great I mean if I can if I can help bring awareness to other businesses too mm -hmm. that makes me feel so good that makes me feel so happy because everyone wins no one loses yeah. in that scenario the customers Absolutely. are happy we're happy and the other businesses are happy too and Abby every time they pop up they're 
place is packed with people. They're and, slammed. Yeah. They're slammed. Yeah. And so I'm I'm happy that that's the problem that they have now mm-hmm. versus no one walking in the door. It's it's a different um it's a different experience and a different aura when you walk in when things are bustling and people are smiling and people are happy like yep. So it's, it's so much fun to do also because it's the right people when you yeah. involve yourself with the right community and it's your peeps, it's the best because then you work together really well, you get along, you have the same mission and that's really, really important because I've worked with other people that, you know, um, we don't have the same goals, you mm-hmm. know, or they, they feel a little more competitive than they do community. And so there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not what I'm about. I, I exactly. like where everyone benefits and I want to uplift the community. And I'm the type that's like, oh, so-and-so is known for this product. Let that be their thing. I'm going to do my product. And then so-and-so is going to do that. And we can all promote all our stuff together mm-hmm. and, and help each other grow and be better. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. That is so that's awesome. I can't say enough how awesome that is. I get, I'm getting like goosebumps because <laughs> this is, I will share with you, this is why I like what I do. It's like hearing stories and being able to share that with everyone else and just, you know, trying to get people to be inspired, mm-hmm. you know, to just follow their dreams, you know, be a part of a community and just be there for one another. And this yeah. is, this is exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about that too. I I remember being, you know, in the beginning of the Ninong's time when we first opened, like I remember feeling extremely threatened by the big wigs of the mm-hmm. Filipino food industry, you know, and it's like I remember them walking in and like oh no <laughs> immense sense of like we have to we have to be the you know, we have to put on our A game, we have to make sure everything they get is like absolutely perfect and you know whereas if you walk in I'm like hi I'm so happy you're here or if Abby walks in or she's buying something I'm like I hope you like it versus Mm -hmm. like feeling this tense feeling of like are they gonna talk behind my back are they gonna criticize me are they gonna you know um if there if there's anything you know it's always like Abby's like you should do this you should try this why don't you try this because when you're in it Mm-hmm. You don't always see like the potential, just like the her suggestion of the pop-ups. Of I was course. just stressing about all our back expenses that we've had to pay for. And she was like, You you've done pop-ups before. This is not anything new for you. Why don't you use our parking lot? And I was like, Okay, let's try it. And look what it became. <laughs> like it's an amazing thing. But when you're in it, mm-hmm. you don't you can't come up with those ideas because you're so stressed about what is at hand that you have to tackle. And so it's great to have friends like that, that help you come up with ideas and help you be better versus feeling so self-conscious and afraid. You know, you can't get better like that. It doesn't, it doesn't, at least for me, it doesn't work like that for me. Oh no, absolutely. A hundred percent. I agree. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I mean, I think the, the fact that you and Abby just work together and then you, you got a different perspective because I, you know, when you're taking care of your family, you have a certain perspective that kind of get blindsided by everything else, but you're right. Having someone else, a second pair of eyes or a third or a fourth telling you like, Hey, this might work. Are you open to trying it? You know, yeah. <laughs> that makes life so much more fun. <laughs> oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So since, um, since, um, what's it called? I've, probably like talk to you out already. <laughs> no, I love doing this. I love talking with people. So this is fun for me. I can do this all day long. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> well, where can, I know, you know, people, you you have a following, but just for the people that don't know who you are and what Ninos is, um, where can they follow you? Where can they go on the online store? All the, you know, all those details. Yeah. So, um, you can follow us on Instagram. Um, Ninong's Dessert Lab is our Instagram handle. We're also on Facebook. Uh, We actually just had to start a brand new Facebook page. I don't know if you saw that, but Facebook won't let us change the name. They keep saying that it's not, I don't know, they're saying that it's not relevant. I'm like, it is relevant. Hello. (laughs) So they can't, I've asked 
I've requested three times and they denied me every single time, which is why it never changed. And so I just said, okay, fine. I'll just start a new Facebook page. So facebook.com slash Ninong's DL is the, our Facebook page. That's actually where we're going to put our whole schedule of pop-ups from, you know, from now on. So we have um, a few pop-ups coming up this month still. So we're going to pop up one more time at Cafe Aficionado awesome. um, on Memorial Day weekend. Okay. That's Sunday. I think it's May 30th. Yes. Uh, okay. May 30th uh, from 9 to 12 as usual. And uh, we're going to be serving Seasig. <gasps> no. Yeah. Do you have a side of San Miguel? On that one? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're going to serve seasick this time. We've been doing black garlic longanisa for a while because a lot of people actually really enjoyed it. And so uh, we were going to only do it two times, but I think we ended up doing it three or four times. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to switch it up so that it's something a little bit different. So we're going to do seasick since we haven't had you know we haven't done that at all yet and then we always try to change it so we'll probably do seasick two times and then switch to something different and charlie's actually going to make something a little unique also to try out um but i don't want to say what it is yet in case he doesn't do it <laughs> okay let's not i want it to be a surprise i want yeah. it to be but like at least that could be a surprise exactly uh, so he has a really cool idea that he can kind of put his own Filipino twist on, uh, but he's still working on it, he's developing it. So I won't say what it is yet, uh, but we're gonna try and do that for Memorial Day weekend too. And then we're actually also gonna be at The Row in downtown LA, mm -hmm. May 15th and 16th, but we're only gonna be selling pastry. So oh. um, it'll be the weekend after Mother's Day, we're gonna be over there selling pastry also. Uh, and then in June, we have a whole new schedule that we're trying to put together. We're trying to pop up in North Hollywood. We're nice. going to obviously do Cafe Aficionado again. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of things, you know, coming up, which is really, really exciting. And then um, on the personal side, my Instagram is Jessica. So okay. um, I also post like behind the scenes, Ninong stuff. I also post like for other restaurant owners, some resources for for help on like funding and, and stuff like that too. So hopefully spread the word if people don't know or if they're having trouble trying to get, you know, their PPP or whatever it is. Like I try to share as much information as I can to try and help other businesses on there too. So yeah. That's awesome. Yay. You know what? As you were as we were wrapping up, I forgot the one question I wanted to ask you forever and I, I keep on forgetting. Oh, okay. Why Ninongs? I mean, I know it says, I know it's Godfather in Tagalog. Yeah. But, I mean, in English, but why Ninongs? <laughs> so, oddly enough, we were trying for the longest time because we, before we opened, we already knew that we wanted to open. We just couldn't figure out what the name was. And the main thing that we wanted was something that, you know, most people can pronounce and it wouldn't be difficult mm -hmm. because we know Tagalog is not the easiest language for, <laughs> you know, non filipino non-Filipino people to speak and pronounce and read. So that was one criteria because we knew we were going to be outside of the Filipino area. So we wanted it to be a simple name. And then we also wanted something that meant something to us. So we were tossing around um, various things and it came down to either Sampagita Bake Shop <laughs> but Sampaguita is yeah. so hard to say yes. for a, you know if someone were to read, and it's so long so that was one because the Sampaguita flower means a lot to my family and mm -hmm. then the other was uh we came up with Ninongs because my dad is actually everyone's Ninong in my family oh very nice and so when we were thinking about it you're like I know he's not like the face of you know because my dad is very much so not the type to want to you know be on TV be and like yeah. be the face that's not his <laughs> thing but it was an easy word that people could say it meant something to our family and so we we're like okay if we want to center 
you know, our business around family and what we experienced as a family, that, that makes a lot of sense. So that's why we ended up naming it Ninoms. Oh my goodness. I've always wondered. It was like Godfather, but she's a girl. Wouldn't it be Nangs <laughs> because it's Godmother? <laughs> yeah. And actually, originally, I was not an owner of the business. It was my mom, my dad, my aunt, and my uncle. Oh, wow. That originally started the business. Oddly enough, it was my idea because when they lost their jobs in 2008 because of the, you know, the recession, mm-hmm they were trying to figure out what they wanted to do because they were trying to apply for jobs. No one was hiring them. And so they were like, well, we have to do something. And so they wanted to start a Baskin Robbins. Oh, wow. And then I said, why, why would you want to do that? Like the- Baskin Robbins. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's so random. Like, why would you want to start a Baskin Robbins when I grew up with my tita, like baking on the side my whole life? Like she was already baking and making empanadas and all that stuff when she was living with us at my house when I was a kid, when I was a baby. And then um, my mom was a cook. Like she cooked all the time. And I was like, of all things, like, why would you want to start a Baskin Robbins? And I, I just opened up my mouth and I was like, why don't you just do your own thing? If you're going to spend all that money paying right. for, you know, a franchise, you can do your own thing and just start your own with the same amount of money and you're right (laughs) they listened (laughs) look at that look at that (laughs) and Ninongs is born (laughs) oh man well Kissa thank you so much for doing this um I truly enjoyed interviewing you and just hearing your story um you know and just getting this and being able to share it to the community it's thank you I do appreciate it Thank you so much. It was so great to just actually chat with you because every time I see you, I'm either serving you a plate <laughs> or, you know, I don't want to interrupt your Uno game with your daughter yeah. and your husband. So, you know, <laughs> it was really good to be able to sit and chat with you because we actually have never been able to really talk. So Exactly. Nice. No, and this is good. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, Kissa Ortega from Nino's The Surf Lab. Follow her and... Buy more stuff from them. It's really good. <laughs>